Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, I'm going to discuss the latest Bank of England interest rate rise, why the reason they've given for the continued policy of increasing rates is, is not really true, and to discuss the two possible reasons why your mortgage and rent is actually going up. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel. So the Bank of England have raised interest rates again. They've been doing this consistently every time the Monetary Policy Committee has been meeting for the past year. I think I'm right in saying without exception now. The stated reason has always been in order to cool inflation. Now, it is usual for central banks to raise interest rates when inflation is too high. The theory is that by making borrowing more expensive, you calm down people's consumer habits. But this only works if inflation is too high because people are consuming too much. This is not what we have with the high inflation now. It's been caused almost entirely by the high cost of energy in the wake of the full-scale invasion of Ukraine and the high cost of food as a combined result of, of shortages from that invasion and higher import and transport costs from Brexit. Economists at the time said that raising interest rates to cool inflation in our particular case, or let's say our at this time, made no sense at all. The cost of energy was high because oil companies were basically profiteering and our government did less than any other major economy to counter it. The cost of food is increasing, mostly due to war and Brexit, with only a little bit down to increased demand for, say, hospitality since the pandemic restrictions. Besides, the largest cause of the very high inflation, energy costs, was known to be coming down completely independently of interest rates for some time. You know, in the UK, we are still waiting for energy costs to come down, despite wholesale gas prices being at lows not seen for years. But that is, again, because profit is being prioritised, it seems. But the point is that raising interest rates is not going to reduce the cost of food, fuel or energy. These are supply side problems, as they say, not problems of excessive demand. So raising interest rates is only hurting people without dealing with the issue that the Bank of England claim they are addressing. So why are they doing it? Well, there are potentially two reasons. One is more cynical than the other, but the other one is potentially, I suppose, more likely. The cynical reason needs you to think about what the actual impact of, uh, impact of rate rises would be. So what does increasing rates do? It doesn't counter the high cost of food or energy. If we didn't know this before, we must do now because interest rates keep going up and up and up and yet food inflation continues to be excessively high and increasing and energy costs have not yet come down. Even though we know they will later this year because the wholesale price of gas is low. So what does happen? Well, the cost of borrowing goes up. And who does that benefit? Lenders. Essentially, banks and property owners don't mind an increase in interest rates because it means they'll make more money from smaller investments. And although the Bank of England is technically independent of government, I mean, the government meets with them regularly and they oversee appointments. So it's not quite as independent as you may think. You know, with a banker having been chancellor and then prime minister for the past few years, we also have a government that you could argue doesn't really mind if the Bank of England find a convenient excuse to raise interest rates as well. But that's the cynical reason. There is another possible reason, more in line with Tory incompetence rather than banking greed. It's simply that the Bank of England are potentially trapped into this action as a combination of several factors. So first, the Bank of England has a responsibility to control inflation. It's part of their job to try and keep inflation below 2%. Second factor is that the Bank of England have got absolutely no tools to address the current inflation problems. The government could take action. The government could have applied a windfall tax to oil and gas companies. I know they say they have, but they haven't. And use the money raised to keep energy prices down. That would have kept our largest source of inflation down. That was action that only the government could take because it takes the form of tax and spend policies. The Bank of England have no power over that. The government could have adopted a more sensible attitude to immigration and asylum. They could have got more workers into our food production chains to keep food inflation down as well. 
Again, the Bank of England can do nothing about that. The Bank of England can adjust interest rates and they can increase or decrease the supply of money. They can also offer advice to the government and to businesses, but that's about it. So the Bank of England have got absolutely no agency to deal with the particular causes of our high inflation, but it is still their role to control inflation. So trapped between a duty to do something, but unable to do anything useful, they're forced to do something which isn't useful. So they raise interest rates because they have to be seen to be doing something. And the third factor is that the Bank of England are getting no support from the government. We know that the Tories always blame others for their failings, you know, as well as blaming the usual suspects for inflation right now, like COVID and Putin, uh, never Brexit, of course. Tory MPs and commentators have been quick to blame the Bank of England for the mess as well. And the Bank of England are not really able to fire back by saying, well, hang on a minute, we don't have the tools to deal with this current inflation. The government do, and they're choosing not to. See, they're not, independent economists can say that, Bank of England employees can't. The fact of the matter seems to be, your mortgage and rent payments are going up, not because it's a necessary evil to control inflation, but because inflation keeps going up in the UK, despite the fact it's now falling in other major economies, the government are the only ones who could address this, but they're refusing to do so because they act in the interests of those who profit from this, and the Bank of England has to do something, so takes the most credible action that it can. But in terms of what the impact of these rate rises is, it means more money for energy suppliers, for fuel suppliers, for banks, in theory food suppliers, but I think there's been some discussion there suggesting that they're not really making windfall profits, that their profits are when you, in real terms, in line with what they were years ago. So I'm not sure there's any real profiteering going there. But I'll leave you to decide what you think the real reason is. Is it a cynical attempt to make more money for banks, oil companies and energy companies? Because they're certainly making out of this. Or is it just a simple case of Tory incompetence? But what it has absolutely nothing to do with is high inflation. If we had a government which adopted the right policies, we could have had both lower inflation and lower interest rates. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.